Hi, I'm Elise Buckeit, a program specialist for the Columbia Office of Cultural Affairs. Thanks for joining us for another segment of Arts Focus. I'm here with Shauna Johnson, the Executive Director of Access Arts. Welcome, Shauna. Hi. <laughs> How are you today? I'm, I'm pretty good. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. Um, so Access Arts, uh, your mission is creative learning experiences for everyone. Mm -hmm. How did that get started? Well, back in the 70s, uh, there were some folks uh, here in town that um, wanted to bring about a program that would be inclusive, where you had people with disabilities in the classroom with folks without disabilities. And so uh, one of the people kind of spearheading that was Naoma Powell, and she started having art classes in her basement, and it grew from there, and that was, I think, 1971. So you've so been around for a little while now. We've well, uh, yeah, we, I, I haven't been around that long now, but you know, yeah. <laughs> so you guys are still providing classes. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of classes do you have? Well, we've evolved quite a bit um, from just those little uh, classes in her basement. Now we've got, uh, we serve about 4,000 people a year with various classes. We have wow. adults, children. Uh, we still try to maintain an inclusive environment but we also have specialized programs for those with disabilities and uh, veterans. Um, we have kids camps, adult classes, lots of media, drawing, painting, digital photography. Uh, our, probably our two most popular programs are ceramics and weaving. Though Those kind of are the ones we're most known for, I think, yeah. Um, I know you have an artist in residency program. Mm -hmm. um, do you have anybody right now? Um, yeah, we have, uh, let's see, we have four residents right now. This is actually work by one of them I brought to show you guys, uh, Cassie. She's kind of wrapping up with us this summer, so I wanted to make sure everyone had a chance to see her work. Um, she does earthenware, uh, tableware, uh, functional pottery, and then she has all these whimsical little scenes drawn on the surface. They're so fun. It's can people stop by then the studio to see her work? Um, in our office area, uh, in the administrative building, we have a gallery area and they can come and view and, and potentially buy her things as long as she's still with us. So sometime awesome. soon. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so when does your next session of classes start? Um, that So we're in the middle of a session right now. So the next one would start uh, July 9th okay. and they go six weeks. So students take class once a week. They come every week for class and then um, we have a break in between and then they go all year, so. Um, and you also have, I know, a lot of summer programs for kids. What is in store this summer? Yeah, we're gearing up for that. Um, so our summer camps are a week long. Uh, a student can sign up for one week or all six. They go from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, we're and we have before care and after care. You know, we really try to cater to those working parents. Uh, but throughout the day, they do artwork in all different media around a different theme. So each week is a different theme. And they do fibers, clay, all kinds of stuff. What ages are able to go to that? Um, ages five and up. So as long as they are eligible to start kindergarten in the fall, they're eligible to be in our program. Are those still accessible? Um, mm -hmm. Do you have special? Yeah, we actually, well, so we have the inclusive, everyone welcome atmosphere in our full day camps, but we also have half day camps for those kiddos that uh, maybe aren't up for a full day of <laughs> art making. So they can choose morning or afternoon. Uh, and those adaptive camps are, um, there's two weeks of those instead of just instead of six we just have two yeah. sure so if, if you were a kid picking your camp which one of them appeals to you the most which um, theme week <laughs> gee um i don't remember the dates on it but I, the theme i liked the most was around the world and so oh. for the five days each day they will you know kind of teleport to a different place in the world and they will learn about the artwork from that place and you know, make art inspired by that is by very those cool. So yeah. 
So what other things do you have coming up in store? I think you told me a little bit before we started about yeah. an exciting thing coming down the pipeline. What's that? Yeah, so we're getting new kilns. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, we've been working really hard. All last year we did a lot of fundraising. We had, um, we had a lot of individuals that contributed um, and we've raised all the money we need. We're getting a gas kiln this month. And then in the fall, we're going to build a wood kiln, which is my favorite. So I'm really excited about that. And these back here, these are examples of wood fire. Yeah. Yeah. So with both gas and wood kilns, you have it's called atmospheric firing. Because you don't just alter the temperature, you change the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. And so with wood... Every time, so the kiln is heated by a wood fire. And so once you build the fire, you have to keep it going. And it usually goes for three, four days, and you get upwards of 2,400 degrees. And so as you put in wood, it changes the oxygen in the air, and you get wood ash, and just all these different variables. Yeah, very unique. So it comes wow, out are really so neat. Cool. Yeah, thanks. That's awesome. Very exciting. Um, so for somebody who's never uh, never done any pottery or ceramics mm -hmm. or fiber before, should they be intimidated to come to a class? No, no. <laughs> Our mission is creative learning experiences for everyone. So 